Hey everyone, this is John and welcome to this episode of Dinosaur 10, the show where we count down 10 facts about your favorite dinosaurs. Today, Spinosaurus takes the stage. Today's model is the Schleich model. 2014 was a big year in Spinosaurus history and everyone's been talking about it lately, so we're going to jump right in. Let's start today's countdown. Number 10. Discovery and Naming Spinosaurus was discovered in 1912 in the Baharia Formation in Egypt. In 1915, paleontologist Ernst Stromer named this dinosaur Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, which means Egyptian spine lizard, referring to the sail on its back. A second species, Spinosaurus moroccanus, was named in 1996. However, we can't really tell if Spinosaurus moroccanus is actually a separate species from Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. Most people refer to them as one species, so we'll just talk about the one species Stromer named in 1915, Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. Number 9. Original Specimen One of the reasons why paleontologists still have so many questions about Spinosaurus is the original remains that were found in 1912 were destroyed during World War II in a bombing raid, and others remained scarce. Fortunately, not all was lost. While the skeleton itself was lost, Strummer's notes did survive, and paleontologists have been using those to reconstruct Spinosaurus. Parts of Spinosaurus skeletons would be found later, but it wouldn't be until 2014 that another specimen of Spinosaurus would be discovered by a team led by paleontologist Nizar Ibrahim, and this one would challenge everyone to really rethink the way we look at Spinosaurus. Number 8. Constructing a Spinosaurus It is really hard to reconstruct a dinosaur if you don't have good specimens to study. The destruction of the 1915 specimen of Spinosaurus made it difficult for paleontologists to continue studying Spinosaurus, and specimens were rare. However, things changed in 1983. In 1983, a dinosaur called Baryonyx was discovered in the United Kingdom. Why am I talking about Baryonyx during a Spinosaurus show? The reason is simple. Paleontologists realized that Baryonyx was very similar to the Spinosaurus notes and fossils. When scaled up, Baryonyx resembled Spinosaurus and paleontologists were able to begin reconstructing Spinosaurus using baryonyx for comparison. This began the transformation from an animal resembling an allosaurus with a sail on its back to the animal that Spinosaurus has become in 2014. Number 7. Largest Carnivorous Dinosaur Spinosaurus currently holds the title of largest carnivorous dinosaur ever to exist. Estimates of Spinosaurus's length and weight put it at about 50 feet long and 23 tons. To put that in perspective, this is about the width of an American basketball court. To compare, the biggest specimens of T-Rex are only about 40 feet long and weigh about 20 tons. To be fair, this title only holds until someone finds a specimen of any other carnivorous dinosaur that is larger. Until then, the winner is Spinosaurus. Number 6. Spinosaurus is home. Spinosaurus roamed northern Africa 97 million years ago, near the beginning of the late Cretaceous period, in what would later become Egypt in the Sahara Desert. The Sahara is a desert now, but it was not 97 million years ago. When Spinosaurus was around, northern Africa was a lush and swampy land. There were a lot of animals, and a lot, and I mean a lot of predators. There were other carnivorous dinosaurs the size of T-Rex, giant crocodiles, and even giant pterosaurs there was a lot of competition for food. All these predators ate different things, and one thing that probably helped them all exist together was the fact that they ate different prey. Number 5. The Spinosaurus Sail One of the features that set Spinosaurus apart from all other dinosaurs is the giant sail on its back. What was it, and what was it used for? Spinosaurus' sail is made up of several large neural spines that jet out from its back. The bones were connected together with a thin layer of flesh and skin to form the sail. The sail may have acted as a mechanism for Spinosaurus to regulate its temperature in Cretaceous Africa's hot weather. It was also likely used for display to attract members of the opposite sex or to appear bigger to other animals. Number 4. Two legs or four? Did Spinosaurus walk on two legs or four? I know it sounds like a silly question, but that's what the experts are debating today. Ever since Spinosaurus was discovered, all skeletal reconstructions, all books, all pictures, and all models show Spinosaurus walking on two legs. This is how I grew up looking at Spinosaurus. In 2014, Ibrahim's discovery turned this idea upside down by showing Spinosaurus walking on all four legs. Why? 
The hind legs of this Spinosaurus were much smaller than the previous models, and legs this small made it impossible for Spinosaurus to walk on two legs. Opponents of this idea argue that the calculations for the skeletal reconstruction were incorrect, or that the bones were from a different dinosaur altogether. Whatever the case may be, the latest Spinosaurus reconstruction actually shows Spinosaurus walking on all four legs. What do you think? Leave your comments in the comments section below. Number 3. The Spinosaurus Skull The Spinosaurus skull does not look like the typical skull of a theropod dinosaur like T. rex. When you first look at it, it looks a lot more like a crocodile skull than a dinosaur's. It is longer and thinner. Its mouth is filled with conical teeth suited for grabbing fish out of the water rather than dagger-like teeth that tear at prey like T. rex. Also, its nostrils are further up into the skull, something that could help prevent Spinosaurus from inhaling water. Lastly, the skull also looks like it housed pressure receptors at the tip, which is something crocodiles would use to detect movement in the water. Number 2. First Semi-Aquatic Dinosaur Spinosaurus' skull does resemble a crocodilian skull, and the features on the skull seem more suited to an animal that lived and hunted fish in the water rather than other dinosaurs on land. More adaptations would come up from the 2014 discovery that would lead paleontologists to conclude that Spinosaurus lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle. First, the leg bones were dense, not hollow, which would help control its buoyancy in the water. Second, the hind feet looked like they may have been somewhat webbed, which would also help Spinosaurus swim. Third, its narrow hips and long tail could help Spinosaurus propel itself through the water. These adaptations combined show a creature that spent a significant amount of time in the water. Number 1. Transformation We have known Spinosaurus for a hundred years now, and it has changed drastically since paleontologists first dug up its bones. When Stromer first described Spinosaurus, it looked like any other carnivorous dinosaur with a sail on its back. Then, when Baryonyx was discovered, its arms grew and it gained a crocodile-like skull. Now, with Ibrahim's discovery last year, there's a very strong chance Spinosaurus actually lived in the water most of the time and walked on all four legs. The point to drive home here is that paleontologists describe dinosaurs based on the information they have, and when they get new information, things change. I can't wait for another Spinosaurus discovery and the changes that are sure to come up for Spinosaurus in the future. Well, that ends the countdown for Spinosaurus. I hope you enjoyed today's facts. Did you learn anything new about Spinosaurus? What do you think about the many transformations Spinosaurus has undergone since its discovery? What dinosaurs would you like to see featured on Dinosaur 10? Be sure to check out Schleich's website to see Spinosaurus and other dinosaur figures. Leave your comments in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe and visit JohnAtTheZoo.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back for the next episode of Dinosaur 10.